process started with an invitation from John and Joe Gow that they would like a work of mine and could I come out and discuss it with them. I came and stayed on the farm and uh, I spent some time, probably days, walking around looking for, getting a feeling for the place and looking for uh, what might be an appropriate place to start thinking about making work. We've made a decision to have a point of difference. We only have New Zealand native trees and we only have New Zealand sculptors. When I first met Graham Bennett at Sculpture on the Gulf in January 2003, and we'd always followed Graham's work, we've got an indoor piece of his, but from that time on, as he had the numerous visits, the drawings, the paintings, the sketches, the maquette, and the maquette kept on changing. So it's that process that I want to share. What people take out of it is up to them. When I first came to the uh, uh, property. Uh, the part that caught my attention, and perhaps the most obvious part, is the uh, water's edge and the juxtaposition between the, the built, the manufactured, and the natural, with the pier marching out into the water. I observed that of tide coming in, the tide going out, and little ripples and waves and so on. And I thought that this was a, uh, uh, an important starting point. What I particularly liked about the water's edge were some of the social history associated with that, particularly the story of the Connells, who had, on occasions, to go to a party, rowed from here across to Coromandel. Apparently they would leave at about three o'clock in the afternoon, and we don't know how many men and how many women went. They would party, and then they'd leave again at one o'clock in the morning and row back, row back to Connells Bay. It's 15, or 15 miles or more across there. The specifics of the uh, Connell family and their comings and goings with the larger view of the comings and goings and settlement of New Zealand in general and who we are, where we are in this part of the world. Hence Graham's title, Reasons to Return, is just so appropriate for the sculpture. The title for the work, it's come from a whole page of different titles that have made reference to a number of things. I'm thinking of the return of the Connells of course, but I'm also thinking of title cycles, lunar cycles, and within the work is a number of references to infinity and tidal cycles. I looked around the property and I thought it was a little too obvious to make reference to that point and I started seeking somewhere that was relatively obscure and away from the water's edge. Listening to why he chose that site, because that blew me away, because to me that site did nothing for me. But when he pointed out what he saw, I started to see the whole area differently. Key early parts were discussions with engineers to see what was possible, because the site that we finally chose was tricky. I had worked a lot with Jeff Golding before and uh, he was working with the company in Haven Engineering in Nelson and we decided to proceed with the construction of the sculpture there because they are marine engineers and this is a marine environment and they understood some of the issues associated with that. We had to do a number of prototypes to see what would be substantial enough to take the weight and very low in maintenance because it's going to be very inaccessible. So there was a number of processes to go through that were largely structural and fabrication type issues. Other decisions that had to be made were what uh, treatment the pole would have to make it durable and long-lasting. And we looked into various paint systems and into the colours. I looked carefully at the colours of the Kanuka forest that it was to be part of and how it might have a sense of belonging in that particular space there by some reference to those colours. And then there was a lot of logistics associated with how to transport the works. are very large, very heavy, over a tonne and freighting and getting everything to the right place at the right time. So there were a number of uh, technical issues to deal with right throughout the project.
would think that my work was successful if people were able to bring a number of their own private different sorts of stories to it and be, be able to be some sort of catalyst for those to perhaps notice that the proportions of the overhead elements are similar to segments of the globe and there's a number of global references there. But I also like the aspect that uh, if they felt when they went past it that there wasn't any single viewpoint, if it was really hard to photograph and get a single photograph, I think that would be important because it's encouraging them to move around and to move through and past and beyond and look at it from different views. And then they will see different reference points to sky and sea and trees and environment. To not have a Grand Bennett here, um, there'd be a huge, huge hole in our collection of sculpture. Mm. We're very, very proud and pleased oh, sure. to have had, to have Graham have completed this piece. It's much, much more than what we ever expected, both in terms of its volume, its impact on the landscape. Um, it's not a matter of just purchasing a work from a gallery and dumping it in. You know, this, this relationship has been going now for some time and I'm, I know it'll carry on for the rest of our lives.